construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making. Visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca. The time brought to you by All Style Construction is 6 o'clock. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio, owned and operated by Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. We are located at 3601-118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Streaming live 24-7 at hggradio.ca or download our HGG Radio mobile app from the Google Play Store or Apple Store. Higher Ground Gospel Radio, reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. God the glory, we give God the praise for what he's doing and what he continues to do. Let me say good morning to you and you and you. Welcome to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. 
Yours truly, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. Let me say good morning to our friends joining us at hggradio.ca. Our friends listening to us on the HGG Radio mobile app. Good morning to you. To our friends joining us on Facebook, our friends on YouTube, a special good morning to you. Just your morning, your afternoon, your evening, depending on your time zone. Really, really hope you are doing well. Just about five minutes after six o'clock, Mountain Standard Time. Five minutes after seven o'clock, if you're joining us from Jamaica. Five minutes after eight o'clock, if you're on the Eastern Time Zone. Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio, HGG Radio, reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. Saying good morning to all my early birds of this morning, my friend Kathleen Andrews, Joan Mullings, Teresa Jones, Michelle Bennett, Diane Brown, Joyce Ellen Richards, Arlene J, Rosemary Riley, Gladys Simmons, blessings to you, Joyvis Thomas, blessings to you, Eloni Taylor, Charlene Edwards, Nicole Myers, Jacqueline Anderson, blessings, Salonji Williamson, Lero Chambers, Patrick Watson, Teresa Hamilton, blessings to you, Pam Shirley, Angela Hackett, and Elsie Knight, blessings, Almarie Natty, blessings, Andrea Bell Navis, how are you doing? Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio. It's a beautiful day to give God glory. It's a beautiful day to give God praise. God has been faithful to you. He has been faithful to me. Of course, in a little while, we're going to make way for our opening prayer. Then we're going to make way for a very interesting devotion. And I say it's interesting because I don't know where the Lord will lead us this morning. But he will lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Then right after a devotional at 6.30, we're going to make way for a Bible reading. We're still in the prophetic book of the of Jeremiah. We call him the weeping prophet. So we get to hear more from Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah. Right after a Bible reading, we'll make way for a song of the day. I do apologize yesterday for the abrupt end right here on YouTube. I, 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 that's why I gave you the warning, you know, about these playing songs on YouTube. You know, like YouTube doesn't want you to play any big song. They want to conform you and keep you a certain way. So whilst I was live on YouTube yesterday, the broadcast ended abruptly. So I do apologize for that yesterday. So for those who were tuned in yesterday and all of a sudden you see the video stop, I wasn't the one who stopped it. YouTube was the one who stopped the video. But we give God thanks nevertheless for what he's doing. YouTube can't stop the word of God from going forth. God's word must go forth this morning. And God will get the glory. He will get the praise. So again, we do apologize for that abrupt ending yesterday. So that means, you know, we can't do the song requests on YouTube. You have to join me at on our website or on the mobile app. So that won't stop us from doing the song request segment. It only allows us to come on over to hggradio.ca or listen to us on the HGG Radio mobile app. So that's for next Tuesday. And of course, on tomorrow, which is Thursday, we're going to be doing the old It's song suggestion. So you get to request those retro songs. Um, We'll do that tomorrow. All right. Then right after um, our um, song of the day, we're going to make way for the program expectation with pastor and teacher Dean A. Brown. Then right after the program expectation, we're going to make way for MPIAW. I have a very special video I want to share with you in that time. We're going to be doing another replay of one of my special guests who came on MPIAW. Got to tell you more about that when that time comes. Of course, you pull the curtains down at 8 o'clock right here inside the Hope of Glory morning show. Here's truly Roshane Douglas taking good care of you until that time. So don't go anywhere. Stick and stay. There's a blessing with your name written on it.
HGG Radio. It is now time for us to pray. Whoever you are, wherever you are, bow your heads at this time. Father, we acknowledge you as God. We acknowledge you as King. We acknowledge you as Master of everything. We crown you King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God, we place you at the highest place for you are the great high priest. You're the one that we exalt. You're the one that we adore. You're the one that we lift up. You're the one that we magnify. You're the one that we glorify. We pray this morning that your name will be glorified. God, you'll edify your people through your word. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, give us confirmation and clarity as you'll minister a word to us. Send your word directly from heaven. Let it be a fresh word out of the press this morning as your people will give you glory, as your people will give you praise because you're the God that revealed yourself to us in the season and and in this time, in this moment, right on this station, we thank you for your revelation this morning. We thank you, God, that your word will be clear. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. I know this morning that there's a blessing with your name written on it. Let me see if I can do something here. Um, okay, so that's, that's not working. I was trying to add another device. But this morning, we're speaking to you on the devotional theme. Our devotional theme this morning is Fill My Cup, Lord. Fill My Cup, Lord. What is your cup size this morning? I want to ask you the question this morning. What's your cup size? Now, normally, if you go to buy coffee or if you go to buy tea at a certain um, place, whether it be Tim Hortons if you're here in Canada, or do you go to Starbucks or you go to McDonald's or McDonald's, whichever, whichever pronunciation it is, whichever one of these places you normally go and buy a cup of tea. You normally ask them for a certain cup size. If you go to certain restaurants and you purchase a drink, they will ask you what size drink do you need? Do you need a small, a medium, a large, an extra large? I want to know what's your cup size this morning. What's your cup size? What's your cup size? Our devotional theme, Fill My Cup, Lord. Imagine you go to the restaurant of heaven. What cup size would you utilize? I want you to be honest. If you're given the option of taking a small, maybe an extra small, maybe a medium, a large, an extra large, which cup would you choose if you go to the restaurant of heaven? Sister Verna says a large Sister Pam says a large. I want to hear your views this morning as you join in. So this morning we're speaking about filling my cup. Fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> Joan Mulling says extra large cup, please. <laughs> I would take the extra large because I want everything that I can get from God. Somebody else says extra large. So we need all that we need from God. We're going to take everything that belongs to us. Even what the enemy stole from us, we're going to take it this morning by force. So this morning's devotional theme, Fill My Cup, Lord. Very powerful song that we listen to. That's a song, that's a title of a song that many of us all know. The song that says, Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. From, yeah, <laughs> that same song. I won't get into the realm of singing this morning. But this morning, we're speaking on the devotional theme, Fill My Cup, Lord. What does that really mean to you? So here we see one of the most popular scriptures ever written. And all of us knew it going to primary school, high school, um, basic school, college. Not sure if they do stuff like this in college, but let's leave it at high school. For those who went to or lived in Jamaica or maybe certain places. But you would have been familiar with this psalm. Psalm. And I want you to tell me then what psalm I'm talking about to see if um, I'm on the right path this morning. Let me see who... Who is, who is with me this morning? I'm not going to tell you the number. What number psalm are we going to be talking about this morning? Let me see all my bright students. I would choose my Jamaican mug. 
That's my friend Nicole Myers. Blessings to you. Um, Paulette Nash, blessings. All those who are joining us, fill my cup, Lord. We're going to a very popular psalm. Which psalm am I thinking about this morning? Somebody says Psalm 100. No, that's not the one. That's not the one, my friend Hope Briscoe. All right, so Rosemary Riley is the first person to get the correct psalm. So the psalm that we're looking in this morning is Psalm 23. I believe it's the most popular psalm. Somebody says um, Psalm 1. Verna McLeod says 23. So all those who said 23, 23 is the number that we're looking at this morning. So here we see in the book of Psalm 23, of course, it starts by saying, The Lord is my shepherd. Another translation says, The Lord is my shepherd. Um, this is the Amplified. It says, To feed, to guide, and to shield me. And I shall not want. Now, he makes me, or he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And this is where it gets interesting in verse 4 of Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Remember, believers, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and a sound mind. So you will go through some dark tunnels. You will go through some situations. But here we see where the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Another translation says, even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. I wanted to type this morning, God is with me. We're getting closer to our devotional scripture this morning. God is with me. I wanted to type it this morning. God is with me. God is with me. It doesn't matter your current situation. It doesn't matter what ominous money is in your bank account. I wanted to type it this morning. God is with me me. God is with me. God is with me. So even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're declaring God is with me. Even when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're declaring God is with me. Your boss is behaving a certain way. Your co-workers, they're behaving a certain way against you. But you're declaring God is with me. You're overlooked. You're pushed back. You're abused. You're, you, you know, you're treated a certain way but God is with you. JPS, cut off your light, but God is with you. You know, <laughs> the scripture says, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So even when it gets dark in your home, and you don't have any electricity, God is still with you. Turn on the lamp. You remember those five virgins? Are those ten virgins, the five foolish and the five wise virgins? You know, some of them had oil in their lamps. So the Bible didn't speak about electricity. The Bible spoke about lamps. The Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So even when JPS turn off your light, you are the light. I wanted to type it this morning. I am the light. I am the light. God is with me. All right, so let's continue this morning. Let's continue. All right, so Psalm 23. So here we see where it says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And verse 4 continues to say, your rod. Now the rod speaks of protection. God is protecting you. Your staff, it speaks of God guiding you. So the staff is there to guide you. So there are times when you don't know the road to take. You don't know which way to go. But the staff of the Lord, it's guiding you on the right path. And God will comfort you. 
-hmm. And it, it doesn't stop there. So even when you are being protected and guided by the Lord, now we see where God prepares a table before you. So now is the time for you to enjoy the benefits that God has for you. The Word of God says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not His benefits. So here we see there's a benefit when you stay with God. So even when you go through some dark times, even when you go through some testings, even when you go through the fire, even when you go through the trial. Here we see where the Bible says God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So your enemies will be at your table. They will see the benefits that God has for you. They will see the doors God opens up for you. I remember it was on Monday. <laughs> I remember it was on Monday. I said to you that I had a testimony I wanted to share. How many of you remembered um, recently when I told you that somebody hit my car? Anybody remember? If anybody remember, just type yes. I remember telling you guys, you know, I didn't meet, really meet in a, a major accident. It was a minor accident. I want to say blessings to you, Faith Morgan. Anybody remember that incident I shared recently? And I told you that, you know, Sister Angela Belnavi says yes. Chub Checker says yes. Joel Mulling says yes. Elsie Knight says yes. Rosemary Riley says yes. Arlene J says yes. So everybody clearly remembers that story. And I remember we had a devotional where I said, there are times we have to leave it to God. I remember on Monday, I said to you, I didn't want to share the testimony until today. Could have shared it yesterday, but I said it on um, I said it on Monday that I was going to share the testimony with you. So Hope Brisker remembers, Iasin Wallen, Cynthia Wallen, I should say, remember. So everybody here seems to remember. Yes. So Rosemary says yes when you was carrying your child to school. So you remember. And the day before I met in this accident, I had my English exam because you have to do an English exam for those who are in Canada who normally applies for permanent residence or citizenship and stuff like that. You have to do what is called an English test. So, but the day before I had my English test, I met in the accident, but thanks be to God, I passed my English test. But the moral of the story is that the insurance, I reached out to my insurance, they called me and they told me that, you know, they're going to deal with the matter. But the long and short of the story is that I received a settlement and um, my insurance told me that because of the um, estimate that was given for my vehicle, the estimate was way, way more than what my vehicle was valued at. So guess what, my friends? My insurance company, they paid me out. And now I'm driving a new vehicle. Thanks be to God. So I'm no longer driving a 2010 vehicle. God has upgraded me from a 2010 now to a 2014. You know, I, I, it's the first time. So I, I have a brand new car outside. Thanks be to God. That's how God works. I didn't prepare for any car. I wasn't planning on buying any new car. I was very contented in, in a driving the vehicle that I'm, God currently blessed me with. It was very faithful. It took me to the U.S. border. It took me very some far distances. Because to drive to the U.S. border, it's like 600 and something kilometers. So it took me to the U.S. border and it took me, come, took me back home. So I traveled 1,200 kilometers in one day. That's how faithful the car I had was. Nothing was wrong with it. But I had to give up that car in order to receive this new one. What am I saying to the, us this morning? God wants to fill our cups. God wants us to focus on him. Remember, I always say to you that seek ye first the kingdom of God. So even at the time when the accident happened, I was so frustrated. You know, I was so shaken up because I was saying, God, how can you allow this to happen? But I didn't know that God orchestrated this accident so that God could bless me with a new car. I didn't, I didn't plan it. I didn't plan to tell the lady to, show, to open up our door or anything like that. But that's how God works. So God prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. And this is where it gets very interesting. This is our key, key statement this morning. My cup run it over. Or another translation says, my cup overflows. I wanted to type this morning, overflow, 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 overflow. I want to ask you the question this morning. What's your expectation of what God can do for you? And while I was getting ready to share this morning's devotional, as we were getting ready to close, you know, you know, I have to balance everything in the time that I, we're allotted these days. Um, it's not the usual thing. So normally, this is a, 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 a thing of water. This is a, what you call it, a, a container with water. And this is a little cup. Notice if I pour this little cup in this container here. Let me hope everybody can see it. Notice it's still not enough. This little cup is going to overflow. I can't overflow it because of the keyboard that's right here. So I might get into trouble. So let me pour back this water here. So what I'm saying to the believers this morning, your expectation of God should be like this cup here. And when God begins to pour his blessings on you, this is the amount of blessings you receive. And even when God begins to pour the blessing and you think that you have enough capacity, then you realize that even the very thing you realize that it's now going to be overflow. And that's what God wants to do for us in this season. He wants to bless you in such a way that it begins to overflow. It doesn't matter what where you are in God. God is going to bless you beyond your expectation. So even though your expectation is like this, God says, I'm going to overflow your expectation. Even when your expectation is like this, God says, I'm going to overflow your expectation. I want to encourage somebody this morning morning is there anything too hard for the lord even when you don't when you have a few days left even when the time is shortening your time is coming to an end god says get ready for the overflow even when your back is against the wall get ready for the overflow so here we see where he says he anoints your head with oil I want to encourage you this morning that you are anointed. The word of God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And the final scripture I'd like to bring to your attention this morning, I was speaking about the overflow. We're also speaking about God enlarging our capacity to receive more. I wanted to type more. You want to receive more from God. So God wants also to in, enlarge your capacity. God wants to stretch you more so that you can receive more. He wants you to have more faith. He wants you to spend more time in prayer. Now, here we see where the word more comes right here in the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. His mother called him Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez called on the God of Israel. I want you to call on your God. We're going to pray in just a little while. And we're going to pray like how Jabez prayed. Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And notice he said, enlarge my coast. In other words, Jabez was, was saying, enlarge my territory. Jabez was saying, enlarge my capacity. And he also declared that thy hand might be with me. You remember David was the one who said he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over and thou wouldest keep me from evil. David said, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil that it may not grieve me. And God granted that which he requested. I want to encourage somebody in this season. God will do amazing things for you. He's saying, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. I wanted to type, God, let it be known to G-O-D, God, capital G, not the common G, but the capital one, because God is getting ready to do amazing things for you. Father, we thank you this morning for 
for ministering your word to us. Thank you, God, for blessing your people. Thank you, God, for showing up and showing off. In Jesus' name we pray. And the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. Making the time 6.30 right here on HGG Radio. You're inside the Hope of Glory morning show with yours truly, Roshane Douglas, the Christ in me, the Hope of Glory. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio, and God is up to something in this season. Stay tuned. I know that there's a blessing with your name written on it. We're going to take a quick break, and then right after the break, we're going to make way for a Bible reading courtesy of our friends over there at Faith comes by hearing. Stay tuned, my friends. There's a lava flow. Join Pastor Dean A. Brown for the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. The word of the Lord says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, brought to you by the Christ Alive Christian Center, 427. 17 to 19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. From the east to the west, the north to the south, join me, Brother Rodney, weekdays, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. through to 6 p.m. on HGG Radio for Higher Praise, reaching you are the highest mountain and the lowest valley. Come for the music, stay for the worship, where we educate, inform, and uplift your soul. From 4 p.m. through to 6 p.m., this and every weekdays, right here on HGG Radio. You don't want to miss it. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Time now for a Bible reading courtesy of our friends over there at Faith Comes by Hearing. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 35 and 36. I want you to listen, listen, and be blessed. Jeremiah chapter 35. When Jehoiakim was king of Judah, the Lord told me, Go to the Rechabite clan and invite them to meet you in one of the side rooms of the temple. When they arrive, offer them a drink of wine. So I went to Jeazaniah, the leader of the clan, and I invited him and all the men of his clan. I brought them into the temple courtyard and took them upstairs to a room belonging to the prophets, who were followers of Hanan, son of Igdaliah. It was next to a room belonging to some of the officials, and that room was over the one belonging to Maaseah, a priest who was one of the high officials in the temple. I set out some large bowls full of wine together with some cups, and then I said to the Rechabites, Have some wine. But they answered, No, the ancestor of our clan, Jonadab, son of Rechab, made a rule that we must obey. He said, Don't ever drink wine, or build houses, or plant crops and vineyards. Instead, you must always live in tents and move from place to place. If you obey this command, you will live a long time. Our clan has always obeyed Jonadab's command. To this very day, we and our wives and sons and daughters don't drink wine or build houses or plant vineyards or crops. And we have lived in tents, except now we have to live inside Jerusalem because Nebuchadnezzar has taken over the countryside with his army from Babylonia and Syria. Then the Lord told me to say to the people of Judah and Jerusalem, I, the Lord All-Powerful, the God of Israel, want you to learn a lesson from the Rechabite clan. Their ancestor Jonadab told his descendants never to drink wine, and to this very day they have obeyed him. But I have spoken to you over and over, and you haven't obeyed me. You refuse to listen to my prophets who kept telling you, Stop doing evil and worshipping other gods. Start obeying the Lord, and he will let you live in this land he gave your ancestors. The Rechabites have obeyed the command of their ancestor Jonadab, but you have not obeyed me, your God. I am the Lord all-powerful, and I warned you about the terrible things that would happen to you if you did not listen to me. You have ignored me, so now disaster will strike you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord told me to say to the Rechabite clan, I am the Lord, all-powerful, the God of Israel. 
You have obeyed your ancestor Jonadab, so I promise that your clan will be my Jeremiah servants and will 36. never die out. During the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah, the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, since the time Josiah was king, I have been speaking to you about Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Now, get a scroll and write down everything I have told you. Then read it to the people of Judah. Maybe they will stop sinning when they hear what terrible things I plan for them. And if they turn to me, I will forgive them. I sent for Baruch son of Neriah and asked him to help me. I repeated everything the Lord had told me, and Baruch wrote it all down on a scroll. Then I said, Baruch, the officials refused to let me go into the Lord's temple, so you must go instead. Wait for the next holy day when the people of Judah come to the temple to pray and to go without eating. Then take this scroll to the temple and read it aloud. The Lord is furious, and if the people hear how he is going to punish them, maybe they will ask to be forgiven. In the ninth month of the fifth year that Jehoiakim was king, the leader set a day when everyone who lived in Jerusalem or who was visiting here had to pray and go without eating. So Baruch took the scroll to the upper courtyard of the temple. He went over to the side of the courtyard and stood in a covered area near New Gate, where he read the scroll aloud. This covered area belonged to Gemariah, one of the king's highest officials. Gemariah's son, Micaiah, was there and heard Baruch read what the Lord had said. When Baruch finished reading, Micaiah went down to the palace. His father, Gemariah, was in the official's room meeting with the rest of the king's officials, including Elishama, Deleah, Elnathan, and Zedekiah. Micaiah told them what he had heard Baruch reading to the people. Then the official sent Jehudai and Shelemiah to tell Baruch, Bring us that scroll. When Baruch arrived with the scroll, the official said, Please sit down and read it to us, which he did. After they heard what was written on the scroll, they were worried and said to each other, The king needs to hear this. Turning to Baruch, they asked, Did someone tell you what to write on the scroll? Yes, Jeremiah did, Baruch replied. I wrote down just what he told me. The official said, You and Jeremiah must go into hiding and don't tell anyone where you are. The officials put the scroll in Elishama's room and went to see the king, who was in one of the rooms where he lived and worked during the winter. It was the ninth month of the year, so there was a fire burning in the fireplace and the king was sitting nearby. After the officials told the king about the scroll, he sent Jehudai to get it. Then Jehudai started reading the scroll to the king and his officials. But every time Jehudai finished reading three or four columns, the king would tell him to cut them off with his penknife and throw them in the fire. Elnathan, Deleah, and Gemariah begged the king not to burn the scroll, but he ignored them, and soon there was nothing left of it. The king and his servants listened to what was written on the scroll, but they were not afraid, and they did not tear their clothes in sorrow. The king told his son Jeremiel to take Sariah and Shelemiah and to go arrest Baruch and me, but the Lord kept them from finding us. I had told Baruch what to write on that first scroll, but King Jehoiakim had burned it, so the Lord told me to get another scroll and write down everything that had been on the first one. Then he told me to say to King Jehoiakim, not only did you burn Jeremiah's scroll, you had the nerve to ask why he had written that the king of Babylonia would attack and ruin the land, killing all the people and even the animals. So I, the Lord, promise that you will be killed and your body thrown out on the ground. The sun will beat down on it during the day and the frost will settle on it at night, and none of your descendants will ever be king of Judah." You, your children, and your servants are evil, and I will punish all of you. I warned you and the people of Judah and Jerusalem that I would bring disaster, but none of you have listened, so now you are doomed. After the Lord finished speaking to me, I got another scroll and gave it to Baruch. 
Then I told him what to write so this second scroll would contain even more than was on the scroll Jehoiakim had burned. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. You just heard of the reading there of Jeremiah chapter 35 and 36. Really hope you were blessed by the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. It is now time for the song of the day. The song of the day comes to us from the artist Gotti Gotti. Title of this one featuring Garfield Reed. Title of this one, Fill My Truck. Gospel Radio, sound there of Reverend Gotti Gotti on this one featuring Garfield Reed. Fill My Truck. Of course, our devotional theme this morning was Fill My Cup. What a fitting song to play right there just before we make way for the program expectation. Uh, The program expectation comes our way this morning, courtesy of the Christ Alive Christian Center, uh, 4217 to 19, Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, USA. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Expectation Broadcast, the radio outreach of Christ Alive Christian Center with pastor and teacher Dean A. Brown. Please stay tuned to the end of the broadcast for more information. And now your host, Pastor Dean A. Brown, with today's teaching. This is on some move. It meant you're lifting furniture. You're not just driving. See, that's why when some of these people today complain about the little things they do in church because they got to come every Sunday and usher, it, there's a human side you don't want to say, shut up. You could, you, you could handle what people like me and others like me did in church. We were helping to move people. Yeah, people traveling, and the pastor called me. Could you take them to the airport, please? When they're coming back with church van. You will have since learned that those things shouldn't happen. Not from the context of human, but from the context of IRS rules. But at the end of the day, that's what you're asked to do. And that's what I did. Come on now. Amen? See? See? All right? And, and, and you know, and, and so the thing is this, people need to realize, you need people in your life that can help you hear God. I've said to people many times, your problem is you're searching for a church instead of a pastor. Because you can find a church and not find a pastor. Why? Because that pastor may not be ordained to speak to your life. But once you find a man or woman of God who's ordained to speak into your life, you found a church. So I never went church hopping. When I went, to, when I went off to Raymond, I didn't go from church to church either. I spent my time. I'm serious. I never sent a visit to church here and there. But Sunday mornings didn't find me missing my church to go someplace else. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let me behave myself. So Samuel, right, with Eli's help, recognized that it was the voice of God he was hearing. Amen? We need to be hearing the voice of the Spirit. Exodus 19, please. Exodus 19 and verse 19. I like the way this is worded. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by what? Voice. God answered him by what? By voice. God has a voice. Amen? Now, Jesus in his teachings showed us that there are two voices we got to watch out for. All right? John 10, 4 and 5. Two voices we got to watch out for. One is the voice of the shepherd. And the other is the voice of the stranger. The shepherd being Jesus, the stranger being the devil. John 10, 4 and 5. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and his sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. So when people are being misled, it means one thing. They don't know the shepherd's voice. They don't know the shepherd's voice. 
Come on now. They don't know the shepherd's voice. One of my instructors when I was in Bible school said that on a trip to Israel, he was sharing this, the driver of the tour bus that we're on said to them, he's going to take them to a certain spot because he wanted them to see something fascinating. So they got to a spot that was high up and they were looking down in the valley and they could see um, shepherds with herds of sheep coming from different directions. And he said in looking at it, he was thinking, my goodness, they're going to meet up and all these sheep are going to mix up. What's going to happen? And he said, they all got to a place where they all got together. The shepherds kept walking. And after a while, you just saw the, the sheep started breaking out behind the, each shepherd. And he said he noticed that every shepherd was making a uh, um, sound. And the reason the sheep did not go off after another shepherd, even though they all intermingled, was because each herd knew the voice of their shepherd. The problem sometimes, even within church circles, is that some people don't know the voice of their pastor. That's why they will listen to somebody else and overwrite things that their pastor is teaching when the pastor is teaching based upon the word and the will of God. No one tells you that you're not going to get words that will bless you through other voices. Any pastor that doesn't want you to listen to anybody else needs prayer. Okay? But at the same time, you need to be very careful. Now let me say this. Because this is something that must be said. Christians, especially in churches, right, who take new converts and to follow them from church to church, are doing those new converts a disservice. New converts need to sit under their shepherd. They need to be able to be mature enough to be able to discern before they start going all over the place. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Amen? But he says they don't know the voice of a stranger. They know the voice of a shepherd. Now sometimes what happens to people is this. When it comes to the issue even in, in, in church leadership, people assume that because they also hear from God, all right, that they, um, that they, what's the word I'm looking for? That that means then, you know, you know if, if they believe the church should do something because they think God said something to them, that they, you know, then the pastor should listen and do it. Where, what verse of scripture do you find that in? I mean, the, 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 because again, the bottom, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this, because people don't realize this. There is no instance in Scripture where God calls a group and says, you get together and make decisions together about what you want to do where my plan is concerned. God always calls an individual and then surround them with people, support them. Okay? And those individuals need to hear the voice of God as it relates to their assignment. Hooey. Let the teacher teach. <laughs> Amen. They need to hear the voice of God in relation to their assignment. So if I was to ask you, what's God saying to you concerning what you're assigned to do? Can you tell me? All right. And if it is God, it is never going to violate the mandate of the, the local assembly. Because God is not confused. Come on now. Amen? It's never going to violate the mandate of the local assembly. Because God is not confused. He's not the author of confusion. Very simple. I was recently dealing with um, saying something to one of our leaders and they were getting ready to, to do something with the group that they're leading. And I said, when you get together with them, I want you to give some time this session to them praying. Praying for each other and praying for the church. And the person looked at me and said, 
No problem, Pastor. Amen? Okay? Now, understand that 99.9% .9 of the time I'm not saying anything like that. You know, they're getting together, it's up to them. So long as they're sticking with the mandate, so long as they're sticking with the word, I'm fine. Amen? The person didn't look at me and say, well, that's not what I planned today. I'll do it next time. Okay? Because the thing about there's just something about, you know, the way God is. He works in unity with purpose. Amen? So we all can hear from God. Okay? Now, it would be like me going into your house and saying to you, the Lord told me you should move your furniture around because, you know, I don't like, you know, purple. So, you know, you need to make it blue. But you like purple. It's your house. Come on now. Amen. So if you, ask me to, if you ask me to go pick up something for you and you tell me the color you need, I don't get to look at it and say, I don't like that color. I'm going to buy my own color. No. Amen. When you're under authority, you follow authority. Amen. I'm under authority. So I follow authority. You remember when the centurion came to Jesus and Jesus said, I'll come and heal your servant. He said, no, you don't have to come, Lord. He said, Lord, all you've got to do is speak the word because I understand authority. I'm a man under authority, but I also have soldiers under me. And when I tell them go, they go. And I tell them come, they come. But when he said I'm a man under authority, he's also saying that I've got authority over me. And when the authority tells me come, I come. When the authority tells me go, I go. Amen? So what he's saying, Lord, I understand authority. So if you have authority, so if you speak, that's all it will take. Because them spirits are, whatever, sickness, it's got to obey. Amen? So, so I'm saying all this to say this, that for some people, one of the reasons why they, they struggle or they never develop the capacity to hear the voice of God is because they don't position themselves to do so because of their rebel spirits. I didn't plan. You look at my notes. It's not in there. Amen? And, and the thing, listen, don't become the voice of a stranger. Be, be a voice that you will recognize as a voice speaking for God. Thank you for listening to the Expectation broadcast. Expectation is an outreach ministry of Christ Alive Christian Center and Dean Brown Ministries located in the Bronx, New York. If you would like to receive a free copy of the message you have just heard or any other message that is broadcast here on Expectation, email your request to Christ Alive Radio at Yahoo.com. Again, that's Christ Alive Radio at Yahoo.com. The motto and the theme of our ministry is empowering people to be a blessing in their generation. And so we believe that in listening to the messages, you will be empowered and you will be blessed in order to be a blessing to others. If you'd like more information about Christ Alive and Dean Brown Ministries, simply go to our website, ChristAlive.org. Again, that's ChristAlive.org. There you will also find links that will allow you to watch our services as well as to listen to past messages. You can download the app or you can go to our podcast. So many different ways that you can hear the wonderful messages that God has placed in our hearts to share with you. Not only messages that I preach are available through the website, but also messages that have been taught by other wonderful gifts of God that God has placed in our midst or who have come to be a blessing in our church. Again, you can receive a free copy of the message by emailing us at ChristAliveRadio at Yahoo.com. Keep this thought in mind. Without expectation, there can be no manifestation because your expectation is your faith in action. God bless. Thank you for listening to the program Expectation with Pastor and Teacher Dean A. Brown of the Christ Alive Christian Center, 42-17-19 Vario Avenue, Bronx, New York, 
USA. Join us again tomorrow at 645 for another program. You're inside the Hope of Glory Morning Show with your Street Roshane Douglas, the Christ in me, the Hope of Glory. HGG Radio. A revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio. Join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. The Hope of Glory Morning Show is sponsored by All Style Construction. For all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making, visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca, or give them a call at 780-484-888. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. is now time for the segment MPIAW, Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. My guest this morning, uh, this video has been one that was recorded. I believe he was the first guest inside MPIAW. His name is Pastor Joseph Legister. I want you to listen to this word. I know that it will be a blessing to you. I want you to listen, listen, and be blessed. But um, Pastor Joseph is a pastor. Um, you know, he's a minister. He loves God. As a matter of fact, Pastor Joseph Legister, tell us a little bit more about yourself. I'm the one telling people about you, and you're right in front of me this morning. So tell the listeners, um, who is Pastor Joseph? And um, let's dive into the word afterwards. Yeah, I think the easiest way to describe my life, Rashane, is just to say I'm, I'm a servant. I've served in different capacities. I've had the opportunity to, to be a, a pastor, um, to stand as a minister. Uh, to share the gospel as a prayer minister on G98.7. Um, you know, I've had the privilege just to serve and grow as a person in the Lord. But I believe that, you know, more importantly, um, what matters is not, you know, your capacity or how you serve, but who you are as a person. You know, so um happily married with, with two girls, um, my beautiful wife, Shaleen, and, and the girls we we we're, we're we're loving the life that God has given us, you know, and um, it's it's certainly a privilege to to walk this journey with them, and um, I'm just happy to serve and just be a part of whatever God is doing. I think that's the most important thing, whether on the front line, mm -hmm. but especially behind the scenes, that's you right. know, just to be able to do what God has called me to do. So it's it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be here with you this morning. Amen. And it's a privilege to have you. And of course, I know that you have a motivational word to share with the listeners of HGG Radio, Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Of course, I'm going to ask you a little later on in the show. I'm going to remind my friends on Facebook, my friends on YouTube to send in your WhatsApp um, prayer requests to our WhatsApp number. I, I still don't get a hang of the numbers yet. I believe it's uh, 825 three four three four four eight six so i'm getting it now i'm getting it now people so let me type it in before i forget it's a it's eight two five let me go back eight two five three four three four four eight six that's right so for those who are joining on facebook those who are joining on youtube that's the number to send in your prayer requests and a little later on in the show pastor joseph will be praying over your requests of course we're going to open the phone lines for you to call in as well a little later on so so much in store for you this morning and we know that god has a blessing with your name written on it so ladies and gentlemen of hgg radio at this time pastor joseph legister will be sharing a motivational word on this motivational monday go ahead praise god thank you very much Rashane. i just want to share from the book of um just mark chapter 15, just a few verses, and also Romans chapter 8. And uh, this morning, I just want to encourage you just to motivate you, just to change your, your perspective on life and how you look at things, and how you look at, you know, the things that have been happening in your life or maybe even not happening in your life. Some of the things that you thought would have happened, should have happened, or maybe should not have happened in your life. You know, that my, my ultimate goal this morning is to change your perspective on how you view those things 
and how you view God and how you view what's happening in your life. And so I want to share with you on a, on a few uh, scriptures, just Mark chapter 15 from verse 11 um, through to 15. The scripture reads, then Pilate said unto them, why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged or beaten him to be crucified. So these few verses I'm just sharing just about the, the last part of Jesus' crucifixion before, uh, or last part of his trial before he's crucified. Then I'll share with you Romans chapter 8, verse 31. It says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And so I just want to share with you the thought uh, this morning, if God be for you. That's the thought I want to share with you this morning. If God be for you. You know, because oftentimes we look at our situations and our circumstances, we, and we certainly ask the question, is God for us? Is God with us? But this morning, I just want to share with you if God be for you. So I'll just say a quick word of prayer. Just ask for the Lord's leading, you know, just thanking you for being here with us this morning. Praise God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be with your people, just to share your word, just to speak for you, to hear from you. Lord God, we look to you, our rock, our refuge, our hiding place. We know without you, none of this is possible. And we know that through it all, Lord God, we have learned to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And all things will know that you are God and you're in control and you're purposeful. We thank you now for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as I speak to you this morning under the, the theme, if God be for you, you know, many of us as Christians may be familiar with the crucifixion of Jesus. We look at, you know, how unfair, how unjust the process was. And we understand, you know, what it was about. And we realize it was, you know, brought about by, by jealousy, by a group of religious leaders who thought that Jesus's fame was growing too much. They often tried to, to oppose him. They tried to contradict him, but Jesus always was a step ahead of them. But when we look at the crucifixion of Jesus, you know, prior to having the knowledge that we have now, you know, we can understand, we cannot understand why so many people stood there at his trial and, and said nothing. You know, we're living in a time and a, a season of cancel culture, a time and a season where we're quick to take to social media and, and, um, and expose the, the, the injustice in our society. And we, we see the police taking advantage of somebody and we quickly take out our phones and we make sure we record that because we, we want that, that injustice to be echoed in the earth and we want um, the nation uh, to come together, you know, and protest against such actions. But when we look at the trial of Jesus, we see the complete opposite. We see a man who is completely innocent uh, being crucified and accused and crucified for things he has not done. Now, to add insult to injury, when we get to Acts chapter 2, verse 22, the scripture says that Jesus was a man that was approved of God. And so you start to scratch your head and wonder, how could he be a man that's approved of God, but crucified by men? And see, sometimes what we fail to understand is being approved by God doesn't mean that we will be approved by men. In fact, it only means that we will be proved by men. So men, men will try us. Men will put us on, on trials. But one of the beautiful things that I've learned about God and how my perspective on God has changed through my experiences is that I realized that God will always put you in a position where he will give you friendly enemies. I say that because as time progresses in your life, you will conclude that, that many of these enemies that accuse and, and crucify you were more of a friend to you than your real friends were. You know, when I look at the life of, for example, Michael Jordan, and everyone calls him the GOAT, the greatest basketball player to ever live. See, understand that, that there was a time when he was not hailed as such. There was a time when he did not, he did not get that kind of acknowledgement. In fact, there was a time, if you study his history, when he just sat on the bench. Now, when we, when we think of that, it almost seems as though that coach must have missed something. You know, how could you have a player this great and have him on the bench? But, but could it be, could it be that, that that coach was his greatest asset? Because if that coach did not put him on the bench when he was underdeveloped, 
he would not be forced to reevaluate how he needed to approach the game of basketball. He would not be filled with that vigor, that zeal, or that desire to become greater. Maybe that's what gave him the kind of determination that, that pushed him to become the greatest. See, understand that God usually sees your whole life at once. He sees your whole life at once. And sometimes he allows you to be put in situations where you're pushed on the side or, or put on the bench because he wants you to develop. And see, he knows the end from the beginning. This much we know. But, but sometimes even that, knowing that the fact that God knows the end from the beginning is often a miscalculation of God's greatness. What do I mean by that? See, in our minds, we know that he knows the end from the beginning. But what we don't grasp right away is that he also knows our end before the beginning. See, not from the beginning, but before the beginning. And so here's why we have to be careful. You know, the devil can know our end from the beginning, means, meaning he knows from our beginning, meaning he knows what we will be at our birth. And so there's a challenge presented there because we must realize that when we come into this earth, God is not the only one that knows why we are here. Understand that, that, that the devil also knows why we are here. When we look at the, the, the birth of Jesus, you know, we see that the three wise men follow a star, but prior to them following that star to find the baby Jesus, King Herod is aware because he's, he's, he has uh, magicians and enchanters around him, and they let him know that the birth of a great king has just taken place. The birth of a ruler has just taken place. This, this ruler is so great, he's going to threaten your throne. And so right away, the adversary, the devil, has found a vessel by which he can work through, through the envy and the jealousy of this king, that he sends out these wise men and tell them, when you, when you come, when you find the baby Jesus, when you find the one that is born king, come back and tell me because my whole desire is to go and worship him. And so he has this disguise of, of, of worship, but his intent and his motive is truly murder. And so at the birth of Jesus, not just at the birth of Jesus, but also at the birth of Moses, at the birth of deliverers, the adversary is aware of who you are and he, he's threatened by your birth. So when we look at the birth of Jesus and we compare it to the birth of Moses, we realize there was a frenzy at their birth and the, the, the kings or the rulers in that time were threatened. And in Moses' case, they decided to, to make sure that they, they killed every a male child under under that was an infant or younger kill kill all of them uh, ju just because of the weight of Moses's mission the weight of his ministry the weight of his mandate the weight of what God has given him as a purpose is is so threatening to the adversary that the adversary is willing to wipe out a whole generation just to stop him from fulfilling his his God's plan for his life and so understand that he is aware and threatened at your birth but the, the beautiful thing that I found is this, the parents, the parents who are Moses' parents and Jesus' parents, you know, they, they are also aware of why they are here and who they're called to be. And so one of the reasons, one of the reasons why we are losing uh, many battles is often because it takes us half of our lives, if not all of our lives, to figure out who we are. Certainly, it's got to be an advantage if you have godly parents who are inclined with God, not just to have a child, but to have also the purpose of that child be downloaded into their spirit by, by revelation, by the Holy Spirit, by God. It's always going to be an advantage uh, when you know why your child is here. And so I, encourage, I always encourage parents everywhere, if you are seeking to have a child, if you are seeking to, if you're in the process of, of having a child and you're, you're pregnant and you're expecting to have. I encourage you to seek the face of God. It's, it's a beautiful thing to determine the name of the baby and to, and to also have, you know, the, the great reveal where it's a boy or it's a girl. And we, we start to have all these wonderful celebrations. But take time out to seek the face of God to understand the purpose of this child. Because when you understand the purpose of this child, you can appropriate the way you shield this child and protect this child from the adversary. When you understand the kind of child that you have and you understand the purpose of the child, then you will know how the adversary will attack this child. The angel appears to Mary and says, 
you're going to have a child. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. See, we're living in a day and age where it's easy to go on social media or go on the internet and, and search for cute baby names. But it's, it's more important to seek the face of God to understand how this child's name is related to their purpose and what is the purpose of this child. And so here's the thing. It's not that we don't know that our children have a purpose and we don't know that these purposes will be fulfilled. It's not that we don't know that we have a purpose. And it's not that we don't know how these purposes, um, that these purposes will be fulfilled. The problem is we just don't know how it's going to happen. It, this is the problem. God will often tell us about the destination. He will show us the destination. He will not show us the journey. And so we're looking at the life of Jesus, and he, the scripture says he will save his people from their sins. But we're not hearing about the journey. We're only hearing about the ultimate outcome. He's going to save. How is he going to save? He is going to sacrifice himself. And so when we look at this in the light of scripture, we must realize that knowing the destination, and not the journey can often put you in a place of confusion and you'll find great complications in your life because the fact that God shows you the end of the situation, that you're gonna be victorious or you're gonna come out on top, you anticipate that the process is going to be smooth. You anticipate that those who are friends are gonna remain friends. You anticipate that those who are enemies are really against you. But if God be for you, you're going to discover in this process that God can use even your enemies as your greatest assets to get you where you need to be and to fulfill his purpose for your life. I'll give you an example. When we go back to the book of Genesis, we all have known as, as scriptural believers, we all have known the story about uh, Joseph the dreamer and how his brothers betrayed him and you know how they, they sold him into slavery. And a part of that story, as I was listening to a, a minister at our home church just, just ministering yesterday, he mentioned how the, the older brother, Reuben, uh, stepped in as an intercessor for his plan was to deliver Joseph and, and bring him back to his father. So in Genesis chapter 37, we get to a place where the scripture says, and when they saw Joseph coming afar off his brothers, the scripture says they conspired against him and said, come now, let us, behold, the dreamer cometh, come now, let us slay him and we shall see what shall become of his dreams. So Reuben, the older brother, steps in and says, this is our younger brother. Please, let's not kill him. Uh, if anything, let's cast him into a pit. And he cast him into a pit, or they cast him into a pit in hopes that as they go away, Reuben hopes that as they go away, he would come back, take him out of the pit, and deliver him back to his father. He would bring him back home. And Reuben is an honorable brother. He is, he is doing what a brother is supposed to be. Uh, he's doing what a brother is supposed to do and being what a brother is supposed to be. But as I evaluate this situation, you know, if Reuben delivers him and brings him back home, he's done what he's supposed to do. He has done his job. He has covered his little brother. He has loved his brother as himself. The only problem is, even though that story has a wonderful ending, Joseph would be going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. He's going the opposite way of his destiny. That's right. And so in this situation, what I've realized is that when I look at my life, I've been in situations, and maybe as you evaluate this morning, you've been in situations that you realize you were hoping for it to be resolved and, and, and you were waiting it out. But the issue is sometimes we want a resolution, but God wants a revolution. That's right. And so now understand, understand this. Resolutions are not bad. They're, they're, they're not bad. They're, they're, they're great. But if God be for you, a lack of resolution is sometimes the biggest setup for a great revolution. That's right. And so when I look at the trial of Jesus, as we start on this scripture, he was innocent. We know this because Pilate said, I, I found no, no guilt in him. He has done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and no one, I mean, no one, no one else, not, not the people who he, he healed their lame legs, not the people who he, he touched their dumb mouth and they were able to speak, not the people who he opened their deaf ears, not the people who he opened their blind eyes. No one, no one came to his aid. Wow. No one said anything. No one said, Pilate, this is a good man. He did this for me. No one said a word. But the religious leaders moved the crowd to ask for Jesus' crucifixion. 
see, here's the thing. And, and I'll always disassociate myself from, from religion and always associate myself by, in having relationship with God. Because religion can force you to be silent at the crucifixion of just men and women. This is, this is the problem. Religion can force you to be silent at the crucifixion of just men and women. You, you'd want to say something. But to speak up at Jesus' trial would, to, would be to expose the religious leaders. And, and the truth is, some people prioritize running with religious leaders more than they prioritize a relationship with God. Amen. And so sometimes in life, people will accuse you of things and, and you can't get discouraged, but this is going to be the truth. Sometimes it's those who are closest to you. That's right. Because this all started with Judas. It was close to Jesus. He knew who he was. But, but if you're in a season right now where you're going through something, you're in a trial, you're facing an accusation and you, you can't find a resolution, even though you've tried and done everything on your side, then, then maybe you're on the verge of a revolution. And I've often learned that things, some things are never meant to be resolved because it was always meant for you to evolve. And so the thing for which you could not find a resolution has now given birth to a revolution. And you cannot experience revolution without going through evolution to gradually change or to change your opinions or beliefs about a particular situation. As you seek resolution and you realize the resolution is not coming in the form that you thought it would, and you peak the verge of revolution, you step into evolution and you start to change. The situation may not change, but all of a sudden you start to change the way you're looking at the situation and you start to realize maybe this is not meant to destroy me. Maybe this is meant to push me into my destiny. Maybe this is meant to, to release me from who I think I am and release me to who God has called me to be. Maybe this is meant to release me from uh, the limitations that people have put on me and release me into everything, the unlimited potential that, that God has placed on my life. And when I start to see life that way, I start to realize that, that if God is for me, some of the things that I've planned out for myself will not work out because if it works out, it means that I've understood exactly who I am and I've climaxed who I am, but because day by day, I'm still discovering, you're still discovering who God has called you to be, then you're gonna face, you're gonna face situations and circumstances that's gonna cause you to evolve and grow as a person. And so earlier, as I mentioned, Joseph the dreamer, in, in his life, his brother Reuben tried to make a resolution, but it didn't work and thus revolution started. And so he was on the journey where he was sold by his brothers and he sold into slavery. And that seems to be the worst thing because today we would call that human trafficking. That's right. Sold by his brothers. I mean, come on, sold by your enemy, sold by somebody who's going to make a lot of money of maybe off the black market of your organs, that makes sense. But to sell him for the price of a slave, to sell him for just a little change, for small change, it, it makes no sense. It seems Amen. as though they would just take just about anything. That's right. Just to get just to get rid of him. And 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 sometimes when God wants to move you, it will not take much for people to get rid of you. And so I watch his life as his life progresses. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that he finds himself in situations and circumstances where the resolution seemed to be a simple one, seemed to be a simple one. He ends up in the house of, of Potiphar and he becomes the head servant. And, and mind you now, Mrs. Potiphar takes a liking onto him to the point where she's on fire. She's thirsting for him to the point where she can't take, she could, she can't take it anymore. And she, she rips his clothes completely off his body. And he runs out of that house naked, naked and accused. And the resolution seems to be simple, seems to be simple. You know, let's sit him down, let's talk to him, let's ask some of the, any of the servants in the house, hey, did you guys see anything? Do you guys know what happened? And all of a sudden, he ends up in prison. And I believe that in that situation, 
Mr. Potiphar probably knew what happened, but for the pride of his wife and for the pride of his own reputation, he kept quiet. Because, because at the end of the day, the reality is he has a reputation. And his reputation in this moment is not going to save him from his revelation of who God has called him to be. Sometimes, what I mean by that is sometimes we have a reputation. And sometimes that reputation is a good one. And sometimes we we stand in a place where we are enjoying where life is right now. We are everything that we thought we would be. You know, people around us know who we are, but 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 God has another plan. And, and God has only shown us part of the plan. And, and God wants to move him because if God doesn't move him, he becomes comfortable in becoming part of his head servant and he stays there and he never fulfills all that God has called him to wow, be. Wow. So, so the problem is faithful people will not move unless they're pushed. That's right. <laughs> this is the problem. We all seek to be faithful and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And when some of us are faithful, we're, we're saying, hey, man, listen, if, like, like, um, like Ruth and Naomi, we're saying, listen, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your God shall be my oh, God. God. Your yeah. people shall be my people. And we go as far as to say, if they kill you, they got to kill me too. It's a faithful when people got to be pushed. Faithful people have got to be pushed out in order to be pushed started into what God has for them. Wow. So I, I believe that God is pushing some people this morning. Those who are listening, it's just about 20 minutes approaching eight o'clock. And of course, you're, you're listening to Pastor Joseph Legister. He's just sharing a motivational word to start your day, to kickstart your day on this Monday. What you might be a word, in a situation a where you're becoming Pastor Joseph Legister right here on HGG Radio. Really hope you are blessed by the reading of that word. As I said to you, it's a video that was done back in the day and I really hope you are blessed by that motivational word this morning inside MPIAW, Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. I want you to stay tuned because I know that there's a blessing with your name written on it. Stay tuned, my friends. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Lower Morning Show is sponsored by All Style Construction for all your general construction needs, commercial and residential cabinet making. Visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca, or give them a call at 780 484 8885. Come on, somebody praise him right now. Just about three minutes remaining inside. Thank you. M-P-I-A-W, Motivation, Prayer, Instruction, Action, and Worship. So I really want you to continue to pray as the Lord continues to with no show up and show off for His people. Encourage wherever you are, wherever you are, let us pray at this time. Father, we thank you that your Spirit enables us to continue to push, to continue to fast, to continue to pray to continue to seek your face and turn from our evil ways. We thank you, God, for those who are tuned in at this time. We pray, God, that your spirit will activate every dormancy in their body. Every purpose that's dormant will be activated this morning. God, let the anointing flow from the crown of their heads to the very sole of their feet. God, we thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for breakthroughs. We thank you for open doors. We thank you, God, for making ways even when there seems to be no way. We thank you, divine God, that with you, all things are possible. Just lift your Bless the listeners once more. We give God In Jesus Christ's name we pray and the listeners of HGG Radio, we say amen and amen. Indeed, my friend Gladys Simmons, there's a blessing with your name written on it. I did mention to you earlier in the show that 
yesterday's show ended abruptly, so we want to avoid doing that happening this morning. So I want you to come on over to hggradio.ca where we continue the rest of the Hope of Glory morning show. Remember, we pull things down at 8 o'clock. So I want you to keep my company for the next half an hour and next 30 minutes inside a Hope of Glory morning show. And I want you to stick and stay and listen to Higher Ground Gospel Radio throughout the day, my friends. It's only pulling things down on Facebook and, of course, on YouTube. But I want you to come on over to hggradio.ca as you continue to listen to the rest of the Hope of Glory morning show. Do remember coming up at 10 o'clock it's going to be time for the morning flow with pastor odette thompson right after the morning flow it's going to be time for higher drive with denise johnston also coming up immediately following the higher drive will be the apostles doctrine with uh minister tyrone reed very interesting topics you can join him inside that bible discussion program it's called the apostles doctrine over your f- weekdays um, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Yeah. Then right after the Apostles' Doctrine, is going to be time for Higher Praise with Brother Kingsley Rodney. Yeah. A little later on will be Bible study presented by HGTM. That's Higher Grown Tabernacle Ministry. Yeah. The Bible study comes your way later on at 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Yeah. Again, this is where we pull things down on Facebook. And, of course, on YouTube. Stay tuned, my friends. There's a blessing with your name written on it. But I come to tell you right now. Calling all believers. Are you continuing steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine? Join us right here on HGG Radio, Mondays to Fridays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. EST for a new and exciting Bible discussion program, The Apostles' Doctrine. Come and hear the word being rightly divided by dynamic preachers and teachers. It's The Apostles' Doctrine, hosted by Minister Tyrone Reed, weekdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. MST. Come to the fellowship. Stay for Cerebral conversations and all things scriptural. You will make a way.